and we are in Moonlight State Beach in Encinitas, California. So we just got done having dinner. We thought it would be fun to come out to the beach, hang out, listen to the water a little bit, and talk a little bit about admin stuff, our favorite topic. <laughs> um, okay, so both of us just started a new role. So Vanessa has started a role, how long ago? Two and a half weeks. And I started my role about three weeks, so pretty close to the same time frame. So um, what was your favorite or most interesting question during the interview process? My, um, my favorite questions are questions that aren't actually questions because I find some interviews to be just kind of canned like yeah. coming from the same list. So um, when the person who was interviewing me said that there hadn't been an assistant in the role and that I could um, make the role my own, I love creating a process or fixing a process or just figuring it out and also figuring out what he needs because he hadn't been assisted. Right. I just got so excited that I, I kind of myself so and then that is you know You're like I'll be able to do yeah, all these yeah. things for like, you it's gonna be great I, yeah. I just kept saying oh this is gonna be fun it's gonna be fun and he was you know that fueled him up and right there yeah, so. so I think for me um, probably the most interesting so the executive that I was interviewing interviewing with asked me like you have a lot of really good skills why do you really want to be an EA which of course as we know we get that we get asked that question yes. all the time men in many different <laughs> ways yes. yes yes we have amazing access as EAs especially when you're in the c-suite and our ability to really affect change in the company is unparalleled um, I think I just saw a meme today on somebody that I follow on Instagram and I'll link it below but it was pretty funny it was like um, Come, come talk to the person who controls the throne or something like that. Oh. But basically saying as an EA. There's a new title. Yes, right? <laughs> Controller of the throne. So yes. um, I love it because I think that we really do have unequaled access and influence that other people just don't know. Uh, if people knew what we did and the access and the opportunities that we have to change our company, um, I think that they would appreciate the role so much more. But um, yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, so okay, um, so you've been doing this role two weeks, so me for three weeks. What would you say for someone who's in our same position? What's like the top thing that you would have them do? So you know, like as they're starting a new role, I'd say um, just find out where you can add the most value um, the most quickly. Yeah, and um, since. My, um, I'm supporting two executives and um, one travels a lot. So right now, my understanding is I'll be primarily supporting the one that's in the office more. And since he hadn't been assisted um, in his short time in the role, I went and looked at his calendar as soon as possible and saw I like to, to block off time, a morning block, a midday block, and a late afternoon block for thinking time, for lunch, for exercise, whatever he wants to do. Yeah. To use it as to plan slides for the next day and um, just by doing that just like, oh my gosh this is so great or sticking little chunks of time I call them do not books or DMVs yeah. so his time is not back to back to back to back and just doing those simple things which took me about 15 minutes right already just went like you know, yeah he was like oh my god was, somebody's taking care of me I'm so glad you're here I'm like oh that's, that's <laughs> That's my standard standard that I do for when I'm with a new person, and then we just kind of take it from there. You know, which meetings cheeky one own, which meetings are owned by others. Because right now we're trying to to clear off his calendar so he owns the time on it instead of it being owned by others. But it's a right. gradual process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Um, I would say for me, kind of the biggest thing that I'm working through right now is really understanding what my executive needs and learning them, and then catering everything to revolve around that so the executive that I'm currently supporting is really um, focused on decisions and how do we get the team to kind of have everything ready so that he's able to make those decisions so that he's not so heavily involved in the minute details and so even just releasing that from him so that he doesn't have to be in those meetings to check and say hey is the deck ready and where are we on the comms and all of those things that he would normally do um, for him is really taking a lot of that pressure off and so 
for me, I can really see that partnership. He's really learning to lean in, which for me is really valuable. Um, and then I would say, kind of what would you say is something that they should avoid doing when supporting a new executive? Um, Wait, sorry. That's, there we go. I think generally, not, not maybe specific to the person I'm supporting now, but um, trying to own too much. Mm -hmm. I think when someone's new in the role, they need to, to have that awareness of everything and yeah. the meetings and the projects and the big rocks and strategies and such, but um, then knowing how and when they can delegate to their team once they're familiar with their team yeah. to make their time truly strategic. Right. And it's not like about micromanaging or not, it's just learning their team's strength and knowing when to delegate. Right. Yeah. I think for me, the really big part of something that you should not do is kind of really goes along is don't ignore the team. Like get really involved, have those one-on-ones, don't get so busy that you're not meeting with the, um, the A team. So if anybody knows uh, Danielle Hill, who's the EA to the CEO of ELF Beauty, she said this really great um, sentence and she basically said that your, um, your admin team is your lifeline, but the uh, your executive direct reports, they're your A-team. And I would absolutely agree with that statement because those are the people that are really in the know, they're in the business, and they're gonna be able to help you figure out, um, for example, right now I'm trying to learn, hey, my executive can't go to the session, who, it, who can we delegate that to? If I can't attend, who is the um, subject matter expert in this? And so really diving deep and figuring out what do you need from that executive, what are you not getting, how can I help you get it? really does help build a really strong relationship so that people are more willing to partner with you in a different way. Um, any last thoughts on kind of being in a new role? <laughs> Just really seeing where you can add value and not blowing up your new executive's time with that, but yeah. really just trying to be um, present and prescient and just taking everything that you have assembled in your tool belt and yeah. deploying it. Right. Um, because they've hired you at this point, I like, you said 25 years, I'm like saying like 27 yeah. years of doing this. Um, they hired you knowing that you have that capacity. Right. That you don't need to be handheld and micromanaged, so just deploy. Right. And just help them from the get go. Yeah. Can. I would agree. I would say don't be afraid to be an expert. It's okay that you, you well, know, your executive hired you for a reason. Yeah. Um, I am the subject matter expert in all of these things and that's okay and when you're able to own it and be confident I think that most executives will lean into you in that way and they will learn to depend on you and trust you with things and hand things off and um, you know when you start your partnering and your relationship off like that it can only grow from there so thanks you guys so much for joining I'm so excited that I get to spend some time with Vanessa and that you Thank guys you. get to know her a little bit too um, as I understand so you just did a podcast with Jeremy Burrow. So shout out to Jeremy. If you yes. don't watch his podcast, definitely do it or we listen recorded, to his podcast. We recorded um, Leader Assistant Podcast, Jeremy Burrow's. Um, he's, he has a, he records a few and then he edits them and then yeah. he said he'd let me know when mine would be published. So watch for that. So definitely connect with Vanessa on LinkedIn. She's very active over there. And when Jeremy puts out that podcast, make sure you listen to her or listen to that podcast. And I understand that you're like thinking about writing some more articles on LinkedIn. I have one in my draft. Oh. <laughs> so I have about five sentences, but yes, I love to write. That's how I like to communicate. Um, and yeah, hopefully, you know, watch, watch for more. Yeah. On the and I would say, you know, we met at a conference mm -hmm. and we connected at a conference and we really, um, I live in Austin, Texas and she lives out here in California. But that's the thing that I love about the EA community is that you can really, it doesn't matter where you are in the globe, um, you know, there's people all around the world that we talk to. So if you don't know Vanessa or me, we'd love to connect with you. Yeah, if you have questions, absolutely. please reach out to us. And until we'll see you guys later. Thank Bye, y'all. Bye.